often wonder why we call planet Earth, Earth, and not planet ocean. <laughs> I mean, nearly three-fourths of our planet is covered by water, and yet we know very little about this environment. I think all of you probably have, at one point, thought of the ocean, whether or not you consider it a source of recreation, transportation, or perhaps it's a home to mysterious creatures from the abyss. But few people think of the ocean as our life support. But that's exactly what it is. The oceans and its inhabitants represents our thermostat, our air filter, nourishment for millions of people, billions of people around the globe. Our lives are intimately connected to the ocean, and yet it's an environment we know very little about. Now, I've been excited about the ocean since a very young age. <laughs> in fact, when I was in kindergarten, I declared my life's ambition of becoming a marine biologist. <laughs> that, that is after briefly considering a career as a TV star. <laughs> Now, I'm not quite sure where this passion came from, being the daughter of a physicist and an English literature teacher, but I suspect it had a little to do with my surroundings growing up in San Diego, where the beach was my childhood sandbox. So I had a pet clam. It's a little weird, I know. I rescued it from my parents' lobster boil. <laughs> and I had a bedroom that was painted like the interior of a large aquarium. So fast forward 30 years, I'm still quite passionate about the ocean and marine life, except for the thing that I could not have anticipated was that the organisms I am most excited about are not the charismatic marine mammals and fish, but rather the life that you can't see with your naked eye, the marine microbes. So let me tell you about microbes. It's possible you've heard of them referred to by other names. Germs, disease-causing agents, pathogens to be eradicated with antibiotics. <laughs> These systems have been given a bad rap for over a century, but we're beginning to realize that these organisms are not our enemy, but maybe our greatest ally. And this change in public perception has been due in large part to the popularization of this concept of the human microbiome. That is, those billions of microorganisms that benefit us, that live within and on us, that keep us healthy. So if we throw our microbial partners off balance, that's when we get sick. And we're realizing now it's far better to be associated with a large diversity of microorganisms and inoculate often. <laughs> so this connection between our health and well-being and our microbiome is not so surprising in retrospect, considering that all animals and plants evolved in intimate association with microbes. In fact, these single-celled organisms were the first on the scene. They evolved three and a half billion years ago, well before we came into this Earth. And they literally have shaped the planet that we know and enjoy today. So I remember the first time I laid eyes on a microbe. I was in college, and some friends showed me some seawater under the microscope. Stained with a fluorescent dye, I remember being completely amazed at just how many cells there were in, in a small sample. It was like staring at the starry night sky in miniature, and it invoked in me the same sense of wonder and smallness that I often felt when staring into outer space. So perhaps even more impressive than the sheer number of microorganisms on our planet are the myriad of functions that they play in the environment. 
So just like the human microbiome is important for our health and well-being, the same is also true for Earth's microbiome as well. So let me introduce you to a few of the microbial players in the ocean that play an important role in the health of our planet. Oxygen. Okay, all multicellular animals need oxygen. So I want to take a moment, have you guys all take a deep breath. Oxygen produced by plants. Okay, so take another breath. Oxygen produced by marine microbes. You may be surprised, but 50% of the oxygen, that is every other breath that you're taking, was produced by microscopic life in the ocean. That, like plants, takes advantage of the sun's energy. In fact, photosynthesis was an invention by microbes 2.4 billion years ago. And this singular innovation forever changed the chemistry of our planet. So these same microbes actually act like a giant sponge for the greenhouse gas CO2, and thus they play another important role in regulating our climate. By responding dynamically to night light and nutrients, the oceans are literally breathing like an inverse lung. They're taking CO2 from the atmosphere and they're releasing back life-sustaining oxygen. So we know quite a bit about these microbial superheroes that live in the sunlit ocean because they live close to the surface. And we can even track their activity from space as shown in this video here. But this activity zone of photosynthesis is a relatively thin skin compared to the total volume of the ocean, where the depths on average reach two and a half miles. So this deep ocean, defined by complete darkness, frigid temperatures, and crushing pressures, is one of the largest environments on our planet today. And that's the environment that I study. Now, frankly, it's a bit shocking to me that in the year 2016, at a time when we are driving rovers on Mars, that less than 2% of our own deep ocean has been studied. It is, represents truly one of the last unexplored frontiers on our planet today. And I feel incredibly fortunate to have a career that allows me to be part scientist and part explorer of these remote but globally significant ecosystems. So you can imagine that studying an environment that's two and a half miles down poses some unique challenges. And so to study these systems, we use manned and robotic submersibles to collect samples from the deep. And these technologies have enabled some amazing discoveries at depth. There are microbes in the deep sea that also play a role in consuming greenhouse gases. In this case, the gas is methane. It's a molecule that has 24 times the warming potential as CO2 in the atmosphere. And the deep sea houses tremendous quantities of this methane in a form of ice that's stabilized by the high pressure and low temperature found there. And we don't yet have a good accounting for just how much methane is there, but it's believed to be equal to or possibly even greater than all of the fossil fuels known on Earth today. So you may be asking yourself if these deep methane sources have a potential role to play in climate change. Why have I not heard about them before now? And the answer to that is the microbes. There are microbes that live in these same areas where you find these gas deposits, and they serve like an incredibly efficient biological filter. They consume the methane in the deep sea before it has a chance to get out into the atmosphere where its warming effect may take place. So the amazing thing is, given their great importance, these were organisms that we didn't know about. We didn't know their identity until about 15 years ago, silently doing their job 
in the deep sea. So recently, we've realized that these methane consumers are not solo diners, but rather they team up with other microbes that's depicted here in the pink and the green colors. And they cooperatively consume methane in the deep sea. You kind of think of it as a microscopic co-op of sorts. And so the scientific community is really beginning to unravel information about the identity and activity of microbes in a variety of different environments, but we don't yet have enough information that would allow us to predict how these organisms might respond to a changing climate in the future. Will they continue to absorb excess greenhouse gases, or are we going to push them beyond the limits of their capacity? Given that these organisms are typically the first responders and often can accelerate environmental change, the stakes for us are high. But just as we're investing in understanding our human microbiome, we also must invest in understanding how these microorganisms are affecting our planet. So it's an exciting and important time to be in the field of microbial ecology, and there's lots of good reasons to be hopeful, because we're just barely beginning to scratch the surface of this mysterious world, and there's tremendous opportunity for potential discovery here. So I want to leave you with this parting thought. The next time you find yourself by the ocean, I want you to think of these microscopic powerhouses that are driving our planet, Take a deep breath and thank a microbe. <laughs>